Hello dudes, dudettes, duders, and everyone in between, and welcome to the still fairly austerely decorated studio. You know what? Let's do it at the top of the video. Welcome to the ever less austerely decorated office. Today we're going to talk about pelican pluck and peel foam, specifically how to cure it so it'll last that much longer. These foam cases are great for how snug they keep equipment and how easy it is to customize the case exactly as you want it. Unfortunately, foam that's designed to be plucked and peeled will pluck and peel itself with regular use. The cruel hands of time coiling around your fleshy neck will also rend the very youth from your pelican case. Ah, tis unavoidable. That's why we cure the foam so it stays forever pure and young, like a rose cast in glass or the porcelain memories of that one true and abiding love that got away because you were still too green in this cold gray world to love him or her correctly. Moving on, plucking and peeling pelican foam is an absolute joy, so I'm not going to dwell on that because you can figure it out yourself. All I will say is that when doing this, you really want to figure out the layout of your case before you cure the foam, because once it's cured, it's cured. I'll be doing the hard case for my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K and have already settled on a layout. With that decision made, it's time to get the materials you need. For this project, you'll need Flex Seal Liquid Rubber, a stirring rod with the notch for smaller cans, a high-quality NASA-engineered Thermotech disposable corrugated pulp surface on which to work, I use a piece of cardboard, several cheap brushes, and a face mask, or even a full-blown respirator. Rubber seal is some seriously potent stuff, and you do not want to be breathing it. If you have a respirator, wear it. If you don't, use a regular face mask. I actually double mask it when working with rubber seal, and you'll understand why when you smell it. You'll also want to be working in a well-ventilated area. I'm not talking your garage or kitchen with a fan on. I do my rubber sealing work outside. Again, you'll understand when you smell it. Not only is this stuff potent to the smell, but it will goo up anything it touches. That's why I buy as many brushes as I plan to do coats. I like to do one primer coat at the bottom of the foam and three on top. The bottom just needs a bit of reinforcement, but the top will take the brunt of the impact when removing and returning gear, so you really want that sealed up good. If I'm doing four coats, I'll start with four brushes and end with none. Also, each coat takes a day to dry, so make sure you're not going to be using the case for the week you're doing the project. Now. Careful as you might be, a little bit will always drizzle somewhere, and you might want a place to brush off excess rubber every now and then. That's why I do all of my sealing on a big old piece of cardboard. If you had your Pelican case or the foam shipped, good news! It came in a box that's just the right size for this project. Finally, only wear clothing you don't mind destroying. Now, something I learned in the interim was that Flex Seal can seal the can shut. It's that strong. I tried to open it with a screwdriver, tried to open it with pliers, tried to open it with everything I could find in the house. Definitely pick up one of these paint can keys. They cost nothing but a dollar buck fifty, and they are so handy. You can see actually how banged up this is now. Um, they are invaluable for opening up a can of Flex Seal. And as you close it up, make sure you wipe off that little top row there to avoid this problem in the future. Lost about a day of filming fighting with that. So we got our can open, we got our um, little spatula knife. Just mix it up real good. You want to get that stuff nice and homogenized. And then remember to wipe your spatula off because, as we know, Liquid rubber rubberizes whatever it is on, and it will rubberize your spatula as well. First, we're gonna paint this off because we're gonna have to get our brush good and gooey anyway. And then we'll give it another wipe down after that. And you can always wipe excess goo off on your foam. Now, I did wanna get in here and show you how this stuff is gonna behave when it first drops on the styrofoam. So we're gonna get a big little globule going and we're just gonna goop it on there. Now that might look really thick and sloppy, but the next stage is working it into the foam. For the first coat, the primer coat, you're really painting the inside of the foam. You're not painting the outside at all. 
it'll be the second coat and really the third one when we get to the outside. But you'll see how that globule that started out so ugly is now getting worked in and we don't have any real pockets of naked air, which is um, what we don't want. You see how the coat isn't thick enough and it's soaked up all the rubber seal into the foam. So we're just gonna add a little bit more, not a lot. You don't have to do a lot on those cleanups because it's already been soaked in. We've kind of sort of painted the inside and we just want to get that one little tiny batch on the outside of the foam. As you're doing this, the goal is to really suffocate the foam. You want to seal every possible place that air could get in or out because wherever there is air getting in and out, there isn't rubber. And we want rubber everywhere to protect this foam for as long as possible. Really work it in there. You'll be glad you did. Because you're kind of working layer on layer to fill in those air pockets, the primer coat might take a little bit longer to dry than the subsequent coats. That's okay, just leave a little bit of extra time. All right, with that primer coat on, we're gonna set our foam out in the sun to dry a little bit before putting it in the car and driving it home. And here we are, three coats of rubber sealant. Two of them are black rubber, and the third coat, the final coat, is clear rubber sealant. And as you can see, it's much easier to not damage the foam, however aggressive and careless you might be. I did want to show what two coats of sealant looks like. This is the Blackmagic 6K, and it's the case I did first. And you'll notice that the coating is much less even, much splotchier, but still very, very strong. For comparison, here's what one coat looks like. You'll see it is a lot less smooth. You still have the texture of the foam but you don't have to worry too much as it does offer reinforcement. Congratulations, my friend. You now know everything there is to know about rubber sealant, foam, and pelican cases. If you enjoyed this video, do all the things that we appreciate you doing. And if you didn't like this video, don't do any of the things that we don't appreciate you not doing. Go ahead, work the math out on that one. I will see you next time. Oh, and Patreon?